Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Justin Miller. Um, I'm here today with my law partner, Chris Stewart. Um, the name of our firm is uh, Stewart Trial Attorneys. Um, we're here today with Ms. Roxy Washington, Stephen Jackson, Gigi Floyd, uh, Gianna Floyd, who's George Floyd's daughter. Um, on behalf of the family, we just like to say to America and to the world, thank you. Uh, thank you for being present with us in the moment. Um, thank you for caring, um, and thank you for showing your support. Um, this, this battle, this fight is not over. And uh, today we just want to show the world that George Floyd is not just a name, uh, not just a meme, and not just something to be chanted. Um, George Floyd was a real person. Uh, he was a good person and he had people that loved him. And so we're here today to show the world these are the people that loved him, especially this young lady here and this young lady here. And um, with that, I'm going to pass it to my law partner, Chris Stewart, and he'll say a few words. Um, you know, the image that most of us have of uh, George Floyd is the horrible video that we've seen. Um, we've seen the anger in the streets. We've seen so much violence. We've seen beauty also. We've seen people standing up and speaking up. And we've seen massive changes happen across the country. But what we really wanted the world to see is the beauty of their child. The beauty of Gianna, who's going to be taller than me soon, just like her dad. The beauty of Roxy, who is holding up strong throughout this. And the actual situations in life that these things affect. It's not just that someone passes and people are angry in the street. It affects people's actual lives and their futures. So a father was taken. You've seen Ben, who we're working with and, and that team. A brother and sister lost another brother. And here... I want to introduce you to Roxy and to Gigi. Okay. Uh, I don't have a, a lot to say because I can't get my words together right now. But I wanted everybody to know that this is what those officers took from me. At the end of the day, they get to go home and be with their families. Shiana does not have a father. He would never see her grow up graduate. He will never walk down the aisle. <clears throat> if it's a problem she's having and she needs her dad, she does not have that anymore. <clears throat> I'm here for my baby. And I'm here for George because I want justice for him. I want justice for him because he was good. No matter what anybody thinks, he was good. And this is the proof that he was a good man. It really don't make no sense. We all seen it, playing this day. Y'all in here with cameras for a reason, to record 
what's here so you can have it for later. So you can have proof of what happened today. Right? Am I right or wrong? So you can have footage of what happened today. Right? And when you, when you post that footage on your, on your news station or whatever, you expect people to believe what you're posting and what you video was real, right? Am I right or wrong? Correct. Why is it not that simple when somebody's getting videoed and getting murdered? Why is it not that simple? Why do we have to see her pain? Why do we have to see a, a, a daughter getting raised without her father? But you know what? It's a lot of stuff you said that he going to miss, that I'm going to be there for. I'm going to walk her down the aisle. I'm going to be there for her. I'm going to be here to wipe your tears. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be here for you and Gigi. Floyd might not be here, but I'm here for her. I'm here, I'm here to get justice, and we're going to get justice for my brother. We're not leaving. We're going to keep fighting. We're going we're gonna to put my brother to, uh, to we're going to send him home in, in, in beautiful ways this week. But I'm telling you, we are not leaving. We demanded justice, and I'm tired of seeing that. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to see her hurt every day like this. We need justice. We demand it, and some kind of way, God damn it, we're going to get it. Thank y'all for coming, but this shit has to stop, man. It has to stop. Uh, you know, we literally flew up here from Atlanta, where today the district attorney indicted six officers who were involved in beating those college students and tasering them. The district attorney, the mayor, and our chief of police took action in under a week. Fired and indicted. But yet here we're still waiting for the arrest of the other officers. Why can't that be a blueprint of what should happen in these officer-involved situations? The pictures last forever. But justice never truly comes in this, and time and time again we're fighting these cases. Everybody at home is wondering why riots are happening, why protesting is happening. It is because situations like this do not get addressed. No one is saying that every police officer out there is out to try and kill somebody. But when someone does do something, when someone crosses the line, they have to go through the system and be held accountable. How is that not fair? And it always happens to African Americans. And the end result is this. And it's a circle because then it's held against a young African-American child when they don't have a parent, when they don't have a father. Now we're somehow less than equal because we're missing that dad. Well, this is going to be the reason that Gianna is missing that dad, through no fault of her own, through no fault of his. So this helps that cycle. And it has to end. And we plan on fighting until the end to make sure that that happens, um, even with new policies being instituted, with the investigation that was announced today. Uh, we, hate, we hope to see further steps um, so that this never happens again. With that, we'll take a few questions. Very, very few because this is a. Thank you. Um, he was, he was a good man as a father. He was so happy to have her. He was there. He slept the whole time that I went through labor, but when he heard her cry, he got up, he woke up, and I still have a picture of him waking up, getting his baby. He loved her. He loved her so much. One last question. <laughs> to work, to seek work, job opportunity. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, he was. He was. Of course he was. He, he still took care of us. He lived there, but we still had that connection, you know? And he still took care of us. He provided for us. Eat, living here, working. 
That was his main reason for moving here. When he called me, his whole reason was coming was, was to get here, get away from Texas, so he can come and provide for his family, be a better father, be a better provider. His whole reason for being in Minnesota was to work and drive trucks. That's why he came here. And he was doing that. He was doing great here. He was turning the curve. And then this happened. So he was doing his part. So we hope y'all see the uh, human side of George and not just pictures and videos on the internet. And that he has a legacy, a beautiful legacy, that no matter how rough and chaotic the world looks right now, this beautiful little girl is going to have a bright future. Yes, indeed. Um, and, you know, like you said, like Jack said, we're going to guarantee that. Yep. Um, making sure everybody's held accountable and making sure that our future is bright. So now associate this beautiful little face when y'all think of that memory. Um, and when you see images or some outlets trying to bring up things to destroy a man's name, you think of this. Every single time you see Y'all should, should, should know this is my this is the frustration I have. This is my brother's six-year-old daughter. I have a daughter. So this is my frustration. Y'all want to know why I'm here? Why I'm standing? Why I'm here? Because my, my, my brother's daughter have to live without him. Look at the tears from Roxy. This is why I'm here. I'm through crying. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to stand for my brother. I'm ready to get justice for my brother. That's why I'm here. Don't ask me that no more. Thank y'all. Thank you.